I think I'm going to go to sleep now. Oh, your are on. <laughs> it's because it's that cosy and cuddly, this segment, that you, you just want to curl up by the fire and relax. No, you don't. No, that's, that's no you what don't. That's what it, that is what it is, Payne. Okay. Time yep. to go and get a cup of tea, lads. No. Now, <laughs> what, what have we got this time, oh, Simon? Well, we've got this week going back through the decades. We've got eight new episodes this week. You might have been settling down in 1967 to the Evil of the Daleks Part 7 when we saw the final end of the Daleks. Except, yeah, they, they came back. And they said they came back. <laughs> um, they back as well. Trying to be settling down to Army of Ghosts, which the Daleks course, came back. The return of the, of the Daleks. Um, or you might actually, and this, I have a feeling. I think this might be one of um, one of uh, starry-eyed girls' favorites, and that's the Infinite Quest. You might have been settling down to two thousand. Oh, the animated. The Infinite Quest, the um, the animated adventure. But what you would have been settling down to in nineteen sixty. 57 big years ago would be the very first episode of the time meddler uh, which was also known as uh, as checkmate um and this was um this was actually the last serial of season two gosh doesn't that sound incredible to say season two but it was it was the last serial of um season two it was also a few first actually the time meddler. it was the first ever pseudo historical basically that's a term that came to be used in later years basically meaning historical story that's got science fiction overtones to it so it's the very first one of those it was also get this it was the very first time that the tardis was described the acronym of tardis was described as time and relative dimensions in space as opposed to the singular time. Oh, I see mention in space and it was a mistake by uh, the great Maureen O'Brien um, who, who apparently made that little error from, from the script and it sort of stuck ever since. Um, it's also the first time there is no next episode caption for the first two years there had always been a next episode caption this was the first one time we didn't get one. First time we also get another Time Lord to appear apart from the Doctor played of course by the great Peter Butterworth as you can see there who also becomes the first ever recurring villain in the show when he returns in the see, dark all those things that you're describing there Simon they're the bits of housekeeping I suppose and almost a kind of house dress that the show had had mm. for the previous yeah. nearly two years yeah. and I hadn't noticed when because all of that stuff usually in modern TV decisions like that are made aren't they in presentation usually in between seasons so a show will come back and you'll notice that it's been trimmed in some way that it will look and feel slightly different mm. but doctor who i suppose because it was being shown most of the year absolutely they were kind of rolling with it and this was its evolution <laughs> from us from literally a week-to-week -week serial with with every episode having a different title into the format that we would come to know and love yeah, absolutely. They were doing stuff on the fly because there was no time in between seasons. They got about six weeks off to to, to think about other stuff. Um, so so it just it just it just kept happening. Um, and Peter Butterworth, in many ways, was was certainly the first sort of great comedic star to to a, appear in the show. So things were moving, yeah. things were changing. Um, and of course, uh, the, the the time meddler is it's it, it's quite an. In, uh, quite a significant story i would say sort of in those in those not only the early years but in the whole of doctor who because of the fact it was this uh, pseudo historical it started a trend that would then we're still enjoying to this day um and so it was the first one to break out of the mold of just being a dry historical and what's interesting of course with this with time is it was it was repeated back in january 1992 um which yeah. is, on the one hand, it sort of seems a bit of an odd choice. It's a bit sort of left field. It's not like they chose to to, to repeat something big and 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 well known and famous. Um, they went for the time meddler, which but it's uh, quite modest, yeah, a studio modest. based four part story. That was when I first saw it in nineteen ninety two, and it's become one of my favourites ever since. I'm very nostalgic for that. Repeat seasons, JT. You know, right the way from Five Faces. Yeah, repeat seasons are, have their own magic for me. Absolutely. Um, I remember the time um, Meddler being on at that point. I'd actually seen it beforehand at a convention, but it was oh, lovely okay. to see it because everybody was surprised they'd chosen the Time Meddler. Yeah. And I just thought, what a great choice because it's, got, uh, it's yeah. got Bill and there, it's got Peter Purvis, and of course, Peter Put Butterworth has a, a, a following from the Carry On films. Yeah, so man. it actually made sense in 1992 to repeat that. Four episodes, nice and easy, showing time travel. And I thought, I thought that was brilliant. It was enough of the show that I suppose that people who, because the, the show had finished only a couple of years before, it yeah. was still recognisably Doctor Who, like you, science more was there that people would, would see. There was even another TARDIS in there, but 
But yeah, the, I know several people that first saw Doctor Who with that repeat season. Do, do you, do, JT? Do you remember as well the uh, that it immediately followed the awful, awful documentary in inverted commas? Resistance is useless. I have it on video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with I've got the, that. With the anorak <laughs> who was anorak. from Birmingham. Do you remember <laughs> that? He was from Birmingham, the anorak. How it yes, I do. I didn't live that one down at college. No. no. <laughs> yeah. The less said about that, the better. I can't remember the anorak's name, but yeah, it was it was there. It was notorious in Doctor Who circles for quite some time. But the, the time meddler definitely made an impact, <laughs> even though by that point it was like 27 years old, fantastic stuff. Yeah, yeah, quite, quite <laughs> really. Um, but but anyway, yeah, Time Middle is a great story. And as, as I say, we just mentioned the great Maureen O'Brien, who, who who made the slip on the on, on the afternoon TARDIS. And so that moves us beautifully onto our next item because we're celebrating Maureen O'Brien's 79th birthday. Happy birthday, wow. Maureen O'Brien. Wow. Love Maureen O'Brien. Yeah, bless her. She, she, she started, of course, uh, uh, in, in the rescue um, as, as Vicky um, and continued until she was dumped quite unceremoniously in the Myth Makers. Um, so mm. they, they didn't renew a contract. She didn't know whether they were renewing the contract or not. She just basically found out quite late in the day that they weren't. Um, and she just stopped being in Doctor Who. I think it was you know, quite, a, quite an unceremonial end for her, bless her. She did return... Um, to the fold just just once really on television at any rate in the children in need in 1985 she was there um for anybody that saw it at the famous moment when uh, peter davison and i think john pertwee's there colin baker is certainly there when they bring a massive check out of the tardis and there were loads oh, yeah. of, loads of companions and she is in there somewhere i've never actually managed to find her but she is in there but um, i think she's third i think she's at this pat Shelton she... comes out first then carol ann and then maureen Oh, so she's quite. Watch it again. She's the third one out of the box. I remember being glued to that, and because I hadn't seen any of the stories, I didn't know who most of those people no. were. You know, I was like eleven years old. I had no oh, idea what was going on. <laughs> but by the end of it, they were all struggling to get out the box quick enough before the before the item ended. Yeah, the pushed. pushed. But, yeah, but pushed they're actually. Is they actually right? all come out of the TARDIS in continuity order of casting. Oh, there you go. This is oh. Little nuggets that you need. I, I well, need Nathan Turner was on the ball that night. I can assure you. That's There's it. lots of happy birthdays in the chat here, Simon. Oh, You'll be pleased oh, yeah. to see from our space bookers. Uh, and to put her in a little bit of context, she was born in Liverpool, just like the great Elizabeth Sladen and Tom Baker. Uh, she studied at uh, Central School of Speech and Drama. Um, she's 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 done as as so many of these actresses has. She's done endless endless television. Um, she's also done a lot of West End work twice. She won the, uh, not once, but twice she, she won the Sony Best Actress Award for her work on stage. She's also, um, she, she, she's done voiceover numerous times on audiobooks. She's directed plays. She's taught acting in the USA. She's also a playwright, mm -hmm. an award-winning playwright in her own right as well. She was a founding member of the Everyman Theatre in Liverpool. Yes, she um, was. Uh, yeah, there you go. And and latterly, of course, she, she's now, she's now a, 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 you know, a, a of a very successful author of mystery novels, um, starting with Close Upon Death in 1989, uh, and her most recent one was um, Every Step You Take in 2004. Um, but it's it's sad, you know, because I love that photograph that you've got there, Dan, it's just beautiful. Yeah. She looks so happy. But by all accounts, she had a very, very mixed time on Doctor Who. She's got very mixed feelings about it. She's Apparently, one of those that didn't talk about it for a long time, isn't yeah. she? Adrian Hill was another one. And I think it was probably quite a bad experience for her. I found this this quite sad quote from her she, that she said in, in recent years. Um, I don't mind being famous for something that I'm kind of proud of. But as an acting job, I wasn't proud of what I did in Doctor Who. I'm not the slightest bit interested in Doctor Who. And I don't remember anything at all about it. Which is quite sad, really. That, that Yeah, quite because, a because also... I found watching Vicky, she had such lovely chemistry with Bill. Well, I really loved those two whenever it was just the, the scene with the two of them. They just bounced off each other and you almost got that sort of... It was it was like a grandfather and a granddaughter, but different, yeah. and that's what I like about it. It wasn't well, I think it's a, Susan again. I think it's a joy, it's, a joy to watch, Charlotte, I agree. And they're so lovely, so it's a real shame then that she says that. Because mm. she, she just is lovely on screen. Well, you never know I how think... she was treated when she was there, do you? I so... think that's it, Ian. Well, yeah. well, the stories. It? it depends when she said that, because she has been on the fan circuit over recent years. Yeah. So 
Um, and, and when you when you meet certain fans, you do tend to go, oh, okay, you know, and they bring you in yeah. and everything. So, yeah, you know, who you knows? I, I, you know, I ought to just put that in context and say, I found that quote on the internet. Maureen, I'm really sorry if I'm misquoting you. You genuinely didn't say that. You know, I would apologize. <laughs> but I get the from looking at quite a few quotes from her. I think Ian is right. I think her time on the show oh, yeah. was probably not what she had hoped it to be. Mm. Um, and it just it just left her a little bit with a sour taste in her mouth. Um, we do have, Simon, a brand new photograph of Maureen O'Brien yeah. this week connected with Doctor Who because it does seem that she is, you know, as much as a, a lady of, of her years can be, she's very, very active in Doctor Who now on Big Finish on audio. And this week she was oh. photographed with Christopher Eccleston there <laughs> whilst they were both recording for, for Big Finish. They're in a story together called Last of the Zeta Scene where she's playing uh, two characters, one called Cello, who is a rich financier, part of a gaming circle, and somebody called Gyra, who is a, a dancing superstar spider. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds unmissable, doesn't it? <laughs> so yes, there's Maureen O'Brien with Christopher Eccleston. They were both in Cracker back in the early 90s, but were, Chris had just yeah. left it when, when she was coming into it for her stint, where she played Jim Carter's wife. I can't quite remember the setup of that, but really powerful series i absolutely love cracker mm. um, but yeah it's, it is it's just great to see them together photographed she, there with chris Eccles. and she just looks lovely there she just looks like everybody's yeah. favorite grandmother doesn't she she just looks a lovely person probably is now <laughs> yes yeah. and got a fame yeah. smile yeah she? She's sort of still wearing something. I think the Vicky would probably. She's got a roll neck on, and her hair's not that different. So yeah, yeah. happy birthday, yeah, you Maureen. You can see her as Vicky, can't you? And and to uh, answer Peter Harrington's question in the chat, uh, yes, the Everyman Theatre. She actually did before Doctor Who a couple of months before she she, she so she was she was an early developer. You know, she really cracked on. Good on her. So yeah. happy 79th birthday, Maureen. You know, we we we, we wish you well. We salute you. Uh, we certainly, uh, uh, somebody else we absolutely salute, but sadly no longer with us, Dave Prowse. Emily oh. Dave Prowse to give him his cycle. He would have been 87. Fantastic. Sadly, he died in 2020, aged 85. What a legend. Um, he would have been 87. So so we wish you very, very happy mm. birthday, Dave. Um, Much missed sci-fi icon, Simon. Very, very missed. I mean, I mean, literally a sci-fi icon in so many ways. There he is, as we can see, the Minotaur and the Time Monster. Um, Dan, you were quite right when you said to me earlier in the week, well, we had him first, didn't we? Because there he is as, as Darth Vader on the left. But we had him first as the, as the Minotaur and the Time Monster. Um, what, a, what an absolute star. He was, he was born in Bristol, uh, as anybody who has heard him speak <laughs> will obviously know. Mm. Uh, he was raised by his mother and apparently he never knew his father um, and he started doing uh, weightlifting as a teenager because he, he seemed that he didn't he didn't sort of gel well at school didn't enjoy the school um, system um, and ended up entering, entering uh, Mr Universe and won the British heavyweight lifting title he, he get this he trained Christopher Reeve for the part of Superman he did, yep. Yeah, really? um, I didn't know that. He also stopped me from crossing the road in in, in school. I met him in school really? when I was really yeah. young, and he stopped me from crossing the road. So they seriously, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What he is? That, was he there in the capacity of Green Cross Code? Yeah, man? yeah. He came to our school as a Green Cross Brilliant. Code man, and they had like a false um, uh, a zebra crossing, and Brilliant. they made us cross. And he stopped me. He was like, "No, so you're it, not supposed it, to look left and right." <laughs> Ian, for the people who don't remember the Green Cross Code, man, all yeah. the Green Cross Code, what exactly was this? Well, it was an advert he did. Um, he was like a superhero, stop uh, teaching kids how to cross the road properly, look left, look <laughs> right, walk forward. And start, and he went round the schools teaching kids how to cross. Because at that time, kids were getting knocked down by yes. cars by not looking and actually right. coming out yeah. of cars parked as well, which they shouldn't be. So that's the that's the one thing I learned off him is not and, to and cross between cars that are parked when mm -hmm, I was a kid because uh -huh. that never occurred to me when I was a kid. And so, it, yeah. Ian, can can you remember the slogan that went with it, you, which you have to do in a West Country accent? Uh, no, was... <laughs> no <laughs> I don't think I'll attempt that. <laughs> oh, I wasn't there when you crossed the road. That was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just looking at that lovely picture, those kids there will be my age now. Yeah. 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 Oh, there's Bless a their hearts. Let, let's yeah. not forget, this is a significant thing, let's not forget that Dave Prowse took over from the great John Pertwee, who had done the, the, done the, 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 yes. the Splink um, 
campaign mm. that then got turned into the Green Cross Code Man. Um, and interestingly, it was the Green Cross Code Man that Dave always said he was, that was his most proud uh, thing that he'd ever done in his working career was the Green Cross Code. Uh, but of course- Because he'd saved, he saved lives, just as yeah. Ian said. Yeah, but of course, but of course <laughs> We, we literally can't mention Dave Prowse without mentioning, of course, Dave, uh, Darth Vader. And, and it's still, it, it still guts me to this day that by, allegedly from, you know, from what Dave Prowse himself said in his later years, he was excluded from the Star Wars universe. Um, it seems that there was allegedly a misunderstanding yeah. on set. Mm -hmm. I think it was set of Return of the Jedi, or it might have been Empire Strikes Back, that it allegedly it seems to have been laid at the door of Dave Prowse and people mm. to you know the, the the star wars production team supposedly i think took a dislike to this and and he got he got excluded and he got removed from from appearing at official events supposedly um and only appeared at unofficial events and and what, what an absolute tragedy because it was never remedied he's he's mm. sadly now moved on to another dimension and, and it's too late to remedy it now it's so, funny because it's the tax breaks that actually made people like him stars you know him and um yeah. who's the the big guy pat roach yeah, you know, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. because obviously the tax breaks brought the American films over here, mm. and that used a certain percentage of actors over here to, to mm -hmm. coincide with the tax breaks. And Dave mm -hmm. Proud and, and Pat Roach was was you know they were the lucky ones, you know. Absolutely. So there you go. Yeah. And, and, and if any, for anybody out there that is interested in Dave Proud and who isn't, um, I heartily <laughs> recommend there is there is a documentary film out there that was released a few years ago called "I Am Your Father." It's on various <laughs> platforms, and you must really? go it's a great watch. Name. It's a brilliant, film. <laughs> brilliant yeah. film. It focuses yeah. on his on his career. It's a film about Dave Prowse, pretty much by Dave Prowse, um, and he and so that's where he talks very openly about his Star Wars experiences. And it's a cracking film. Go mm. and watch. It's beautiful. I had I had never heard of that. I'll definitely go and seek it out because I remember, like most of you, I suppose, if you've ever been to any events up and down the UK. Dave Prowse was a mainstay. He'd be there, sat at his table. I understand he suffered in his later years didn't he with a lot of pain muscular leg, pain yeah and and uh yeah he, he couldn't move certain you know certain yeah. uh legs and, and arms and things like yeah. that so i i can only, only imagine how difficult that was for a man who'd I, been I, so active all his life i met him at selfridges because um when empire strikes back came out all the stars turned up selfridges to yeah. sign books and stuff and he was one of the last people on the table and I did say to him, you know, you stopped me from crossing the road at my school. And he went, did I? <laughs> so, yeah. So, oh, yes. you know, I remember, I, you know, my heart obviously is there for him. And it's a shame he's he got legend. excluded from. from, yeah, from I, yeah, still, yeah. I still find it so heartbreaking, actually, that he's still right up to his dying breath. I don't think he could understand what he used to say. I, you know, I can't understand why, why George Lucas wouldn't use me. To <laughs> <laughs> no, I am your father. I mean, what was wrong with that? <laughs> you couldn't get it. What a bless, you, bless you, Dave. And thank you to you too, Simon, for, for putting the diary together again this time. If you love the Doctor Who diary, we do put this out as its own That's segment too enough. on the YouTube channel. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the cloister bell to get all the notifications. We'll be back with more from the Doctor Who diary at some point in the future. But yeah, thanks again, Simon. <laughs>